Okay. So thought a little bit about how to like talk about this thing, and there's a lot of background information, um, but you don't really need to understand it to be able to use it. So I'm going to try to just present it from that sort of approach, just and then you know try to be like functional about it. <sighs> so I could talk about it in the context of our server, but I'd rather talk about it in the context of like my own personal version of this. So. Um, this is our server uh, right here. This is I have, I'm a part of a bunch of them, and a lot of them are things I made testing sort of thing. Um, so this is like my own server that just has me and Big Skellybot, and Skellybot is the same as Classbot. It's just a different, it's like you know, in a different place. Um, myself, and then this is the dev version that runs locally. Uh, like if I run, like this one's up on Google Cloud Platform. If I run uh, this local thing, then it will pop up, presumably. Hmm? Huh? 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 Come on. Come on, you coward. Taking so long. Ah, found the What's going on? Anyways, who cares? It works sometimes, <laughs> and when it does, this guy goes active. Anyway, um. So the main thing that I'm trying to like present here is this concept of like prompting the large language model, um, and it's a relatively intuitive concept. Okay, who gives a shit? Basically, when you talk to the bot, it will follow the instructions that it receives. And there's kind of, and when you're chatting with it, there's like a, I call them couplets. I think other people call them like conversational turns, which I don't like because it's like, it sounds weird to just say turn by itself. Um, it's a bird. Uh, an Arctic turn. Um, uh, and so when you, if you, so if you say things to the Bot like chat. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, only say dog. You have to yell, but then it'll say dog because that's what I told it to do. Um, and I could also say things like only speak in haiku. That's John's favorite because uh, it's a good little test. Huh. What's happening here? Uh, I I tell you what doing. <sighs> Only speak in haiku. Oh no, I, for I forgot to write slash chat. That's okay. Right click it and hit apps, um, open chat thread, and then it'll, it's as if I had done slash chat. Same route. Now it'll only speak in haiku. And there you go. Now it's a haiku. Um, oh, uh, I think I talked about this before. This is, it also now it attaches. Don't worry about that. <sighs> right, so prompting, right? I told it what to do and so it does that thing. And uh, the way that the bot works is when you open a chat in a channel, uh, we can think of that location as a context, like this is the context in which you're having this conversation. It's it, where are you having this conversation? I'm having it in the general channel. Where is that channel? Oh, that general channel is in the general category. Oh, where is that category? Oh, that general category is in the John Mathis server. Um, and like in real life, when you have conversations with people, you have them in different contexts and you have different contexts, you have different conversations depending on where you are. If you have, a, if you meet someone in a grocery store, you're going to have a different conversation with them than if you meet them at a house party. 
Um, uh, and so it's kind of the bot's kind of set up to work like that. Um, this, so basically, when I want to show this, I hope it does. Yes, it does. Great. Um, so if I open up a chat in So the way the bot is set up is it uses what we're calling a hierarchical prompting methodology, which I will also happily give credit to JKL for that one. Um, and basically, the way it's set up is when you start a chat, um, I could put this in the code, but I don't really feel like digging through all that right now. Um, it pulls instructions first from, let's get a good one here. First from the category, like, it pulls its instructions, it's, it's prompt, it's in settings or whatever. Uh, not its settings, but it's prompt. Um, hierarchically from the, its context, starting with the channel it's in, and then looking at the uh, categories, and then it's looking at the server it's in. Um, <clears throat> and the way that I'm specifying uh, those prompts, those context prompts for it, um, is using a couple different methods or whatever. But basically, so in this server, I have just like a general category uh, for general type questions. And I also have categories for each of the like, main projects that I'm working on right now. So SkellyBot is this class bot. And also FreeMocap, which is this other thing that I do. Um, and... Make a new one. That's a great idea. Right click, create category. Uh, we're going to call this a uh, demo. No, test. Test category. <sighs> and so I'm going to, in this test category, I'm going to click the button. I'm going to make one. I'm going to say, um, what do we call it? We call it uh, prompt. No, don't do this because the cache takes a little second to update, so it's not may not work directly. No, it doesn't matter. I don't really know if that matters. <sighs> I don't want to start over. <laughs> I'm just gonna push through. Um, okay, yeah, that's fine enough. So when it when I open a chat, I already have a testing channel, so let's just use that. Um, this, it will, and I say, I'll say, I say slash chat, and I want to say hi, hi. I'll just say hi, All right? Just starting a conversation. When I hit this button, it's going to try to figure out, it's going to look at the context to figure out what the prompt for the bot should be. And it's going to start by looking at uh, the description of this channel, which is visible barely um, up here. It says respond. So I have this set to say respond in five emojis or less. Um, or fewer? I guess it should be fewer. But who cares? The bot doesn't care. And I don't either. So I'm not going to fix it. Um, you can access this in various ways. You can click on this, I think, and it pops it up. You can right click the channel and then say edit channel and then you can edit that way. You have to have like the right permissions for that, which I do because I own the server. Um, and so it's gonna go grab that. It's just gonna be happy. When you open up a chat in a given context, it tries to figure out the prompts for that context, starting actually from the top and then working its way down. So it starts by looking into the prompt settings channel and it looks for messages that I have sent um, with the bot emoji attached to it. Um, and I'm speaking anthropomorph anthropomorphically, but this is like code that I wrote. Like it does it because I told it to do this, like I configured it to be this way. Um, not because it's like the best way to do it, but because it's easy to set up within Discord. So there you go. Um, so it goes here and it, it first looks for top level prompt settings channel. It's looking for channels that are called prompt settings. 
Um, it used to, I changed it from bot instructions to prompt settings. Um, I'm not sure which one I prefer, to be honest, but it is set up to look for both. Um, so that's why I don't match. Uh, yeah, so it grabs this and it says, okay, these are these, so this, this channel is not in any category. So it's a top level channel. And so this is a top, like a server wide instruction to keep your answers short unless there's a reason to say more, which is sort of like a concise way that I've managed to sort of come up with uh, through, you know, trial and error to like make the bot give answers that are sort of like, you know, concise. Um, so it grabs that server level instruction and then it goes down into the category and looks for category level instructions, prompt instructions channel, and there aren't, there aren't any in here now. So let's say, I'm going to add one and call it and say, um, always mention oranges, right? So it's part of the rules, always mention oranges, no matter what's going on, only, but if I ask you a question in this place, keep your answers short, always mention dolphins, I'm adding a new top level prompt. Uh, right now it won't see it because it's not tagged. Um, I'm going to add this bot tag, so now we'll see it. Hopefully the cache thing doesn't come and bite me right now. I think I fixed that, but I'm not sure. Um, so. Prompt level instructions, keep your answers short, always mention dolphins. Category level instructions are always mentioned oranges. I also have to tag this one on. And then channel, no wait, we're in testing, and channel level instructions are respond in five emojis or less. So if I open a chat in this location and everything works properly, the instruction set that it will have is keep your answers short, always mention dolphins, always mention oranges, uh, respond in five emojis or less. So if I say hi, and it doesn't, caching is like Discord doesn't always update immediately what you've said, so depending on, it might have, like, it might not see the things I just sent, so I'm not 100%, but I think I fixed that, whatever. Um, the prediction now is that when I talk to it, it will respond five emojis or less, and one of them will be a dolphin, or one of them will be an orange, because those are both emojis. Punch it. Moment of truth. Did it work? Does it work? Come on, baby. Do it. Look at that. What a machine. Um, uh, I can also, so now I'm going to go back and I'm going to turn off always mention oranges. And now if I open a chat, it should still be five emojis. It should probably mention dolphins. It probably won't mention oranges. I don't tell it not to, but like statistically it's unlikely it would just bring up an orange. Um, I also don't need to give it a text. I can just, it handles raw. If, it, if you give it nothing, it just starts it starts the conversation with a dot, like a period. Um, there you go. Dolphins, no oranges. Uh, great. So that's kind of the mechanism of how the, how the bot knows what to do uh, when you open a chat. And then you can now configure that um, appropriately for whatever conversation you want to have. So in my SkellyBot dev category, um, the instructions are basically just saying like, hey, we're using you know, TypeScript and Nest.js and uh, the human is more experienced with Python than they are TypeScript because that's me, I am more experienced with Python. I, I learned how to write TypeScript for this bot. The bot taught me how to do it. This, this bot helped me build this bot. Um, and then I'm like, you know, follow like best practices and blah, blah, blah. Um, and then within this category, there's like different levels of where the, like different sub components of the Skellybot dev project. Um, one is the Discord side stuff. So like, uh, in, so I say in this channel, I'm specifically helping the human. Um, I wrote it in first person because like, it's like a stylistic thing I was kind of trying out uh, because it, it's like, imagine it as if the bot was speaking to itself because it's like in the system prompt, it kind of like, it's kind of how it receives it. Um, but it also, it makes it confusing because like, what are you talking about? Why is it I? Um, uh, in this, I'm specifically helping human with the Discord interface part of the code base. It is using Nicord, 
uh, with the Nest.js implementation of Discord.js. So it's just kind of like, it's convenient to not to just be able to hop in here and say things like, I can say something like slash chat, uh, what, uh, what is a reaction? Which is like, in another context, that's a very ambiguous statement that you might answer in different ways. In this context, it should know that I'm talking about reactions in Discord land, which is what in the code they, yeah, so add reaction. It's like reaction emoji, same button. Um, well, the reaction, okay, whatever, who cares? Uh, and so if I open that chat, it should tell me that in the context of Discord, because I've already prompted it to be that way. Um, so, yeah, so um, that's the basic, uh, what's the word? That's how it works. That's basically how, how the chats get prompted. And you can see that prompt in this JSON. It's not in a way that's like easy to see because it doesn't process line breaks in this. I'm going to eventually change it so it's like a markdown file so you actually can read it more easily. Um, so it's all one line. The slash n is supposed to be is new line, um, but it's not, doesn't uh, format it here. But if I copy that, uh, con control C, hit. And control V. Uh, <laughs> that's not Ooh. I'm actually not sure how to make the ends be respected. I have to like I don't really want to deal with that. But you can see here, server wide instructions for server John Mathis Plus. Always mention Dolphin. So you can see it's it's in there. Um, and you can sort of see what that prompt is and blah blah blah. So cool. Very nice, fun and wild way to use this technology. Super helpful in many ways. Um so that's my, my personal server where I have like access to all the categories, all the channels, I can make whatever I want. Um, in the context of the class, I have made, this This is now a, a one, to, this is, you know, uh, a different environment where now there's like sort of, there's a bunch of people, there's sort of like an implied hierarchy because like I'm running the class, you're in the class, there's a bunch of you, there's only one of me. Um, so rather than yeah, and uh, I set it up that basically now each of you students has a category that you have access to and other people do not. So um, the idea is that within this category, you can start breaking up your uh, capstone interest and in sort of whatever into those little, into different channel categories that you, or sorry, channel topics um, for you to talk to the bot about <coughs> the things that you're into. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that in the context of the class, but a little bit more on the technical side of things. Uh, there are, so you should go through and you should be able to find um, <clears throat> the category that has your same uh, tag number. Um, I might actually ask you guys to like pick like a like pick up an emoji to associate with yourself, um, so that you can put it in the title so that it's easier to scan for. Because right now I understand it's like if you're one hundred seven two one seven and you're trying to find that from this list, like that's not fun. Um, and I honestly wish like. The colors are going to be nice because I'm going to wind up plotting a lot of this data and then I'll be able to like plot the colors, but you know, there's also a lot of very similar looking colors. Uh, so I think uh, discretization by way of emoji might be good. Also Discord does not give a good way to do this. Why am I closing them all? This is a weird thing to do. Um, beefed. This is, this is JKL. JKL is the test student. Is he still? Oh, I should give him. I should, mm -hmm. oh wait, I can do it like this, uh, for testing purposes, John is now a student, he is not an observer, I do this so that I can go in here, right click this, server, no, Sir, mm, yes, server settings, controls, beefed, and then view server as role, 
Which again, like, why is this, like, this should be uh, here. <laughs> is it not? It's not. Like, why do I have to go into a role to view the server as the role? When I get out here, you give me the option of selecting multiple roles. Like, it, that's a, it's a capacity that's above an individual role, so why is it in the wrong place to use interface? Different conversation. Discord. Um, so now, uh, I can view the server under the permissions associated with someone who has the roles of beefed <laughs> and student. Um, and so here I am. My name is beefed. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay. Um, and this is my category, and so I'm here, right-click this, edit category. Oh wait, no, I can't do that. Uh, right, okay. My name is Beefed. I am a Beefed student. Wait, no, I am student Beefed. Uh, and in my category, I can send message, I can type in things, I can type in here. In someone else's category, foof, which is my actual John Mathis human category, um, I cannot, I can only, oh wait, this is a fake one that I didn't actually, I didn't set the permissions for this one. Yeah, see, so I can set the permissions here, and uh, where are we, foof? <laughs> Oof, you motherfucker. Hey. Any other category, like an actual student category, if I am viewing this as server settings, roles, click into whoever one just to get to this button, get back out here, set this to be a beefed student. Uh, foof is a little bit broken because I made that one manually. Um, the, I can't make the bot assign me roles because I'm admin owner whatever and there's like a security thing where like the bots aren't allowed to change permissions of people above them in the permissions hierarchy. But in this one, ha! I cannot. I, I JKL secretly ID beef uh, do not have the permissions to talk in this channel. Notice too that I cannot make channel I can't make new channels in this category. There's no plus sign here. But in my domain, in my house, uh, I can do whatever I want. I can make new categories, I can make new channels. Um, so this is my area. Uh, let's see, 22 minutes in. Um, should I break it? God, I wish I could pause this recording. It's like a, it's like, it seems like a moment to take a breath, you know? <sighs> what am I doing? What am I talking about? What is the goal? The goal is to give you enough background that you can complete the assignment. Um, yes, and so in this category where my name, this, I am beefed, uh, I am hypothetical student beefed, um, oh, and JKL I've just been using as a helpful foil. Like he's a, he is in the server. He is not a student, but I can give him that role, and I can sort of change his permissions like I do. So appreciative of that. So we'll just pretend like I'm this guy, and just pretend like my. Oh wait, I'm viewing this as the role. Three roles. Oh, it's, it's including everyone. Why would you include everyone in that? I don't know. Disable. Right click change nickname uh, what do we call him? Beefed <laughs> it's just so funny though uh, yeah so this is JKL aka Beefed um, and so oh, I gotta go back here I know I did it to myself but I'm still mad um, I have to click so many times in so many places I should be able to access that more directly and I probably can I just don't know the workflow Beefed, beefed, student. Uh, okay. Why does it not say three rolls? 
Um, I was going to closing the loop on the technical component, and then I'm going to make another video where I talk about the specific instructions on what to do. Yes. Uh, here I am. I am beefed. I am in my channel, my beefed channel. <laughs> Sorry, category. The category is above a channel, and it's, you can fold it and whatever. Here I am in general chat. I come in here, and it's got these skelly like the auto deploy thing automatically made uh, prompt settings in here. Um, I realized later that because the bot added the emoji reaction to the message, you actually can't turn it off, which is not ideal. Um, you also can't turn off the server level instructions, which is also not ideal because it's a lot. Like I have like a lot of instructions in this bot instruction channel, um, which is again sort of like prompts that I've kind of honed over the different iterations of using this AI teaching whatever methods. Um, to get the vibes right and to keep in like to, to ensure that the bot will always be talking sort of like be always like roughly on task um, and it applies to every chat in the server which is kind of good but it also means that there's some things that it won't do um, like we discovered last semester that because this is so heavily like I added a bunch of stuff about like like don't be a regular <laughs> don't be like annoying about you stuff like um because like you tell it you're a teaching assistant this is a class these are students it picks up a lot of assumptions about how it should treat you and it's like annoying because it's like oh like you're blah 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 and it's like ah, I just don't like it so I gave it these kind of like like <laughs> sort of like like hyper leftist teaching manuals <laughs> uh, because that like not hyper but like rather um, uh, because it, it I like these books and then it actually helps a lot. I think it helps a lot. I haven't really done the A-B testing there. Uh, focus, fucker. Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> negative self-talk is not great, but it is... Uh, I understand. I interpret it as friendly chiding. <sighs> and it's mostly just because of the alliteration. Right, and so one of the things that we discovered last semester is that if they, the, like, you know, telling it things like, you know, don't talk about the fact that you're a teaching assistant, like, uh, I don't feel the need to bring up the capstone project every time I have a new conversation, because it's like, shut up, my dude. Um, because I know it can feel overwhelming and un overbearing and unfriendly. So these are things that I kind of like added later. So like I'll, I'll start with the top level prompt, talk to it, and when it's like, when it's annoying, I'll go back and I'll add instructions to say like, don't do that annoying thing. <laughs> um, and then I'm just like, I'm playing around with like sprinkling in emojis to like change the vibe of the conversation and like, I just really love the combination of like the wind emoji and the sparkle emoji because it's like, ah, I think it's cute. I, again, I don't have direct A-B testing on like whether or not it actually affects the behavior in a measurable way, uh, but it probably doesn't hurt. Um, anyways, the point I was attempting to make uh, is that one of the things I use this bot for the most is like helping me write code. Uh, like that's why like in my server like these are all code projects this is like how to use ubuntu because i'm like switching to ubuntu this is windows but like i'm annoyed by the fact that i'm on windows right now at this point in my life how to use git how to use ffmpeg um just because the bot is so freaking good at anything technical because it's made of technical um but in the context of the class prompt it probably won't write code for you because it it has internalized I'm a teacher and I'm not supposed to do the work for the students um, so it'll do things like if you ask it to write code it'll tell you how to do it and then it'll be like now you try and it's like motherfucker no <laughs> you be the machine <laughs> we don't respect that form of teaching in this house um, and we kind of we respect we understand it, but we, we maybe respect it, but we don't like it. We don't embody it. That's for sure. Why would I ask you? Like I don't want to. I don't. I as a educator, a am sick of asking you to do things 
Like, why do? Why am I going to ask you questions I know the answer to? Like, why am I going to ask you to do things that I can do and I can just show you how to do? I don't want to watch you struggle. Like, <laughs> like, I know instruction is important. You'll figure it out by doing it. There is no value. Mm. I choose to devalue uh, the part of the learning process where you flail around and bang your head against the walls. There's plenty of hard problems waiting for you that I won't be able to directly help you with. Um, so why would I hold you back from getting to that part by like gating you on some simple thing? Rabbit hole. Um, oh, yeah, so, <laughs> uh, super not relevant, kind of relevant, uh, tangentially relevant. Um, it's part of the performance art aspect of this <laughs> teacher-student relationship. Um, yeah, so eventually I want to add some functionality that will let you sort of turn off the higher, like the, the context, like the higher level context perhaps, so you can talk to it raw. Um, when you're talking to it raw, you're talking to it just like, it's just straight GPT-4, um, specifically GPT-4-1106-preview. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the one. Um, I can show you the other one too, if you don't know what that is and you want to, Google it. Don't you actually, you cannot ask the bot about that question because it doesn't know that. So 1106 preview was, it came out on uh, 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 11 is November 6th. Um, it, it's, it no, it's training goes up to April 23, I believe. Um, and since 1106 is after April, um, it doesn't know that that model exists. <laughs> you can ask it about GPT-4. You can't ask it about GPT-4 1106 preview, uh, which is like one of those things that's like, is that interesting or not? I can't tell. Anyways. Uh, talking about the future functionality, and I said I wouldn't do that. Um, it's a bad, bad, bad practice. Just, it... Um, not bad practice, it's just like, it's a distraction, I think is a better way to say that. Um, I'm going to be adding the functionality that needs to exist um, and not the other functionality because I am, I am but one human and I am so fucking tired. <sighs> to sum up, <laughs> uh, but talk, chat, hierarchical, hierarchical, whatever. Um, if you would like to know more, click upon the bot, click upon the link, enter into the GitHub, GitHub repo of the bot. This is the, this is the bot's code base. Um, this is boilerplate. If you don't know what boilerplate is, uh, ask the bot about that when the bot knows that one. This bot helped me build this bot. Um, I click on this guy. Um, and this is actually not a terrible representation of... Actually, this is a, a pretty decent um, a representation of, like, a sloppy knowledge base. Like, I kind of threw this together. Um, but you can, you can read some stuff if it's helpful to you. Uh, I just like added a bunch of context and stuff like that. Small things, right? Little trees and leaves. If you know what? If you don't get that, uh, we'll talk about it later. Um, okay, for full. So this is a. It's basically a. It's a static website, meaning it. it it's the same every time you go to it. Um, unlike a like you know like like Instagram or whatever Facebook, where it's different every time you go to it. Um, like different pictures and stuff like that. Uh, da, 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 da. This is auto built from this, uh, which is called which is the the folder is called writer side, which is like uh, the one that is auto is like auto generated name from the writer side plugin, which is like a JetBrains thing or whatever. It's free and open source. You can use it. It's like I don't like that it calls it writer side. Like the docs folder should be called docs. Um, I'll fix that 
later by just literally putting that folder in another folder called docs. But, but the docs are auto built from that um, whenever I push a new commit, and um, inside it topics here. There's just a lot of them and they get organized by way of I think this which is XML. Um, this is one of those things is like is this relevant to the class? Kind of. This is probably like I'll show you how to do this but it might be more advanced than you need or want or is relevant. Um, it's just kind of like letting you know that it's there. If you feel like digging deeper uh, if you feel like digging deeper into the, God, this is the problem. This is, this is like the exact like ADHD brain trap. It's like, oh, a thing I could say. That's that would be fun to say. I'm just gonna go for it. <laughs> is it relevant? We'll figure that out after the fact. <sighs> okay. Um, bop -a -dip -boop, bop -a -dip -a -dip bop. Go here. Click upon the bot. Click upon the link. This is the place. Click upon this link. Explore. You will not be, you will be neither rewarded nor punished for your decisions related to such instructions. <sighs> That's enough for this. Okay, I'm going to chop this video, make another one with like specific instructions. This was technical instructions. The Doink.